Pretty good. Yourself? Good. Antonio, um, I'm sure there's a lot of soul searching going on uh, this morning in the building. And, and I heard about a players only meeting kind of thing, and, um, maybe some meetings that were going on today. What do you feel like the message needs to be today? I would just have a correction. Very uh, direct. Just it is what it is. That's what we're going to do. Call a spade a spade. Coach, uh, you know, you've had some time to reflect on the game yesterday and first loss in that kind of fashion since you've been coach. Uh, what did you learn from that? And looking back, was there anything you felt like, you know, you could have done better or learned from, you know, in this experience? Yeah, I mean, we talked about it. The um, idea there, there could be a, a slip up in a game like this where you have, you know, high of a highs against the Ravens and you come out against a team that everybody's expecting you to beat. So we discussed that. We talked about the physicality. We talked about, you know, Andy Dalton and his efficiency, getting the ball out quick, understanding the offense. You know, just kind of looking back, I think all of us, myself, the staff, you know, you know, this, this has got to be better. This has got to be better. Hey, P.F., after the game, you talked about the Raiders having to make business decisions. Have you made any of those yet? No, we haven't. No, we haven't. Got to give it to the players first. Well, obviously, a lot was made of that comment, um, you know, national media-wise this morning. Uh, I guess, have you, have you think about it? Are, are you... Happy that you pointed it out. And I don't bite my toe. Hmm? I don't bite my toe. There's something that, um, you know, when, when it comes to making business decisions on, on the coaching staff's part, is that something where it's lineup changes? Is it potential guys? You know, Just whatever it helps the Raiders win. Right now, that you know that performance is not going to help any team win, let alone the Raiders. I tell you, over the last four games last year, um, you know, uh, Zamir ran. He, he led the NFL you know, in rushing and rushing yards per carry. Um, I know that there was a scheme change. There was an offensive, you know, a coaching change. Do you feel like maybe it needs to go get back to what you were doing last year because there was success last year? No, it was. We did, and you know, last year's last year. Right. We are where we are now. We're just running teams in football, and that's not something I'm proud of. Our staff's not proud of. It. I'm sure our team's not. Um, and again, we're gonna get in here and we're gonna chip away after we make the corrections from today, and be honest with one another. Um, but it's very disappointing to watch our. Do you feel like there's some scheme changes that can? That can I think there's going to be a lot of changes. Is that including personnel? That's uh, I mean, I, like I always say, everything. We just need to be successful, man. Right now, you know, I think yesterday we had a run of six and a run of nine. Everything else was two and three. We're not going to win a national football dude like that. Do you have these uh, apps or Mumford? No, I haven't got them. We've been to meet, just got on these right now. You've consistently talked since you came here about avoiding the roller coaster, not riding that roller coaster weekly, and it's kind of been a roller coaster. I mean, how do you turn what you want into seeing that on the field? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's collective. It's just not myself speaking on it. It's not the coaches. It's the players. It's everybody. We have to do it. We have to buy in. You know, it, it's one of those games when you watch it, you know, it, we, we got beat up on physically. We weren't a more physical team yesterday. We didn't look like the team that wanted it more yesterday, and, and that's got to be a message that we, you know, rally around and, and we really you know, take pride in. Um, and you're gonna have times where you know sometimes your best players don't have their best days and other guys gotta step up. And that's why it's called team football. I think more importantly, I think all of us need to just understand like you got you gotta roll, you need to do it the best you can do it at full speed. The effort wasn't up to par. That hadn't been in, in previous games, you know, that, that showed up. That didn't look good at the end of the game. Um, so those are examples. We're, we're talking about a performance yesterday that obviously nobody was happy with. But there's been some that have been great, like outstanding along the way. I guess, have you identified anything like going into those games preparation wise? No, I mean, listen, we talked about the opportunity here to be two and one at home. The crowd was amazing, like freaking amazing yesterday. Loud, rowdy, felt a little bit old school, but we just didn't, we didn't come to play. You can see that in the very first series defensively. I mean, they went right down the field and then offensively wasn't pretty. And that just kind of, you know, led up to, you know, now, okay. Did we, did we press a little bit? Did we stress? Did we not do a good enough job of, you know, reading, reading, um, um, you know, our must, the goals, the objectives, and then just kind of just, you know, we are talking about reset, you know, after each series. And I think sometimes we let a play or a series linger, and I saw that at halftime. We try to adjust that then. Um, but, you know, the roller coaster, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's an emotional game. It's, it's human nature that plays an element of that, and we just got control of it. We didn't see Jackson play right guard, like you know, uh, uh, alternating a little bit with uh, with Dylan. Is that kind of the plan moving forward, or is because is, we saw him at left guard, um, you know, uh, previously? Is that 
Is there uh, where you feel he's better at? I guess. No, I'm just we try to get him on the field, and that that was really that might be a one time deal. It might be going forward, but just trying to get him on the field, and again trying to find the best five offensive linemen with you know, continuity and chemistry, and you know, obviously protect the quarterback and run the football. AP, I know that you want ball control. You want to eliminate turnovers, but. Al Davis talked about Raiders don't take what the defense gives you. They take what they want. Would you, in that scheme of still being protective of the football, does your offense need to attack more? I mean, we took shots at state, right? We hit mm -hmm. 11 early in the game, backed up, great drive there, 97-yarder. Uh, that got us down, and then obviously we scored with that big play with Trey Tucker, and then we had some plays down the field in the red zone. Um, and then we took another shot later on, and then you know, there's other opportunities where, for whatever reason, it wasn't taken either a breakdown or sack or you know we missed the read whatever it could be you know, we didn't we didn't get those other opportunities but you know there was we felt like yes it was a great opportunity for take shots we threw two of them I'd like to have more Antonio, how much of a factor is max not being close to 100 with that ankle having on the rest of the defense it seemed like everybody kind of played down a little bit yesterday yeah our effort our effort our energy our passion um did not show up yesterday and that just can't always be 98 i mean we just, right. obviously you know what 98 is dealing with you see it um he gave it all he had yesterday, and we got to protect the player. But more importantly, there's 10 other guys on the field. They got to play to a high level. And we did that last week against Baltimore. Those guys did do that. We just got to be consistently doing it. And we didn't play bad because Max wasn't like Max yesterday, right? Max is still at 80% a lot better than any defensive end in the National Football League. So I think just for all of us, it's just doing our job, you know, not getting frustrated with you know, a player or two here, letting that go. That, that, that really showed up yesterday for me. You're talking about about saving Max from Max. Is that a thought in your head about his status this week and playing him or not? Or I'm not really. No, I mean, the thought was to play him. If he was able to play, play him. You know, if he's injured, then we'll protect the player. Um, but, you know, Max is you know, hes different, man. He's a, you know, he's a, he's a guy that's going to take everything, you know, and the guy giving the ability to not allow him to play. And if he has any, you know, anything that he feels like he can do, we'll let him play. But I think the biggest thing, man, is just, you know, we've got some guys linked up in, on the D-line, right? Malcolm, Tyree, and then, then Max. And, you know, you got your captain, your leader that wants to be out there with his players. So we got to look at that going forward of how we're going to handle it. Well, you said you haven't spoken to the players yet, but how do you expect them to react to the business decisions comment from yesterday? Is that more of a wake-up call in the morning? Or? No, it's just, I mean, it's football, right? After a loss like that, things need to change. Yes, because they got hurt so early. You guys pretty much played the whole game. What do you think about his performance? Well? I thought he did well. I thought he had a tough matchup there with Clowney. Clowney had some you know, some power rush moves on him, but for the most part, you know, coming in there, he had limited reps throughout the week. But it was just kind of what we saw in training camp for the guys that were there. Uh, came in, he filled in, and you know we'll see what's going on with Mumford. And if, you know, DJ is there. We're, we're not panicking because for the most part, DJ showed up yesterday. I know we don't know how long Marcus Epps might be out, but you know how confident are you in Isaiah Polamau yeah. stepping in and filling in? Yeah, I mean he's played a lot for us. You know that third safety he had some rotational roles uh, in years past and dying, um, but now he's in his third year. We're really comfortable with him. He had a really good preseason. Um, stepped up yesterday, did a decent job filling in. So we'll see what happens with the Epps here. And then if it's Isaiah, you know obviously we feel really comfortable. Some, uh, there was some national media. They, they're, they're trying to decipher who the business decisions about, and they're showing plays with Jack Jones. Um, did you, you know, in, in particular, have any problem with Jack Jones's effort in the game? Since yeah, I had a problem with our entire defense. Yeah. Yeah. After watching the film, right, just uh, jump out for Gardner and the passing offense we saw on, on the film. Yeah, I mean, you know, there's some plays that I know. Obviously, we like we always say, you know, you want to make and, and take advantage of. But I thought we did some do some good things. You know, the problem is, you know, when you don't win on early downs, these these longer third downs are not that's not in the best interest of our offense and Gardner. So we got to do a better job on early downs and make it easier for them on third down. What did you see from from Aiden in his limited spot duty? I mean, you talked yesterday about just giving him a shot. <clears throat> you do, but is there any chance whatsoever that that gives you pause going forward? Well, I just think you know you look at how the game went. Um, we're down by two scores or so. Let Aiden come in, see what he can do with the offense, move it. You know, we're just trying to look for a spark. Did that mean anything going forward, or is it still garbage yeah. to the guy? And I think we got to get with the players and just you know, evaluate everything from yesterday first. Okay, good. All right. Thank you, AP. Thanks,